Hi everyone. In this session we're going to be having a look at the curve functions. The curve functions are located in the animation editor under the keyframe menu. You'll find the pop-up menu right over here and you have a whole variety of options to choose from. The example I've got here is a very simple straightforward animation where we have some 3D text that is now starting off at the furthest part of the screen and it slowly bounces its way until it reaches the center of the screen. Now let's say for example we wanted this curve to actually start off in the center of the screen and bounce away. Sometimes it might be easier to make the animation in the opposite way and then simply coming to the math operations and just reversing the curve. So by reversing the curve the animation now starts in the center of the screen and then slowly moves away. Another option you've got here is the negate function and the negate function will basically take your positive and negative values of a curve and invert them. The one thing that you need to be aware of when it comes to negate is where the first keyframe is of the curve. In this example you can see that the first keyframe is actually located at a value of zero. So when I negate the curve, the curve is automatically switching at a value of zero. However, if the curve had a different keyframe starting value, so x now has a value of minus 132, when I go ahead and negate the curve, it will use the keyframe, the very first keyframe, as the point of the negate. So when I switch it down, my curve moves down underneath where it originally started off, and you can see how it's now negated into a completely negative sphere. So one little tip, just watch out where that first keyframe is positioned. The next curve function you have here is averaging. And what averaging will do is it will take any curve that you have created and it will average it out until it's a flat line. Just by dragging the slider you can see how the system adds a keyframe per frame and it allows us to create a smoothed curve. So if I drag this value all the way down eventually I get a flat line and that will then be my animation. However, the point of this is if I've created an animation and I'd like to maybe smooth out some of the motion, this could be a very very useful tool. Now because it's added in a keyframe per frame, tweaking this curve can now somewhat be difficult now. So what you can do is inside the curve functions you will see an option called simplify. Just when you select the simplify option and drag the slider, this will just simplify the curve until we have a nice clean smooth curve based on the simplification that we've done. The other curve function you have here is called jitter. Now jitter works in two functions. In a regular curve like this, what Jitter will do is when I drag the value, it first starts off at a flat curve, so it's actually the inverse of average, and as I drag the Jitter value out, it then returns the curve back to normal. So it kind of starts off very small, and it's adding very jittery type movements. The second use of Jitter is when you are stabilizing a pan. So for example, if the camera is moving from left to right and you've got bumpiness in the Y, or the vertical plane, you can use the jitter tool to average out the bumpy movement only in the Y plane and that means you can retain the pan as it's happening over time. This is something we'll have a look at when we address stabilizing. The next option you have here is the bake function. And what the bake function will do is it'll take any curve that you've created which does not possess keyframes and convert it into a keyframe curve. What I mean by this is the following. Let's say for example we have a particular type of curve. So I'm just going to delete a few keyframes as we're working here. So let's say we take these keyframes here, and remember in the previous tutorial I used certain functions to go ahead and delete these operations. Now currently my animation just starts off with three keyframes. What we can go ahead and do here is I can choose my extrapolation tools and set it to do a reverse cycle. You can see how the curve then extrapolates itself over time, creating an animation that is uh, continuous in this case. Now if I wanted to edit the curve it's very easy for me to edit the curve at this particular point where I have the key frameable curve and you can see how the extrapolation will then react accordingly. However if I go further down in time and possibly I wanted to edit the curve at this point you'll notice because it's extrapolated I cannot change it. So it's currently uneditable. What the bake function will do is bake will take the curve and up to the end of my duration, which is 25 frames, it will convert it into an editable curve. The rest of them from here is just extrapolated data which goes beyond my 25 frame duration. So if I was to set the extrapolation back to constant, you can now see how I've now grown my animation 
over the duration of the composite. The last thing I need to do here once again is come back to simplify and simply simplify the curves which will give me this result. You will get the exact same behavior when you're working with an expression. So if I've created an animation based on an expression and then I would like to edit that animation, I need to bake it into a curve and then simplify the keyframes down. Now one of the things that we always seem to encounter is we sometimes make an animation of a certain length and then we decide maybe we want to make the animation a little bit shorter. So one of the ways of doing it inside of here is switching from the channels to the tracks view. You can simply grab the track and shrink it down by grabbing on the end and pulling it towards the endpoint. Now this is actually making the animation shorter over a certain amount of frames. The one thing that can happen is because there are so many keyframes in this animation, sometimes you will find that keyframes actually get stuck between frames. This actually means it makes it almost impossible to actually navigate between those keyframes. So one of the functions that you have got here in the curve functions is an option called frame snapping. When you click on this, it will snap the frames to the closest frames and this will then allow me to accurately then navigate those keyframes at a whole keyframe value. It's a very useful tool when you are shortening or possibly lengthening some of your animations. The next curve function we're going to have a look at is the translate functions. In a previous presentation, I showed you how you have got the translate cursor that you can switch to to freely move the curve around inside the curve editor. However, this can be controlled by constraining it, holding down the shift key, or it's quite free floating, but it's not exactly frame accurate when it comes to moving things around. So what the translate function offers you in the curves is you can then specify a value as to how many frames you want to move the curve down. So translate x lets me say, for example, maybe I want to move the curve down by about five frames. This will then apply itself. The one thing to bear in mind is that this is all selection based. So if I was to go ahead and possibly select some of the keyframes halfway through and I set a translate value of about 10 frames, that will then push just those selected keyframes down the value that I'd like it to be. So watch out for your selection. The same thing applies with translate y as well. If I dial in a value, this will then allow me to adjust the keyframes in the curve by a very accurate amount or a particular value. Lastly, we've got another two functions here called the tangent left and the tangent right. The tangent left function will simply allow me to take a tangent that's been created on a curve and adjust it in a value which allows me to move it around. Once again, this is all based on selection. So if I needed all the curves in the selected area to behave in a certain direction or adjust the tangents equally, the tangent tool is very good. You can see we have controls for the tangent left as well as for the tangent right. So you can adjust this. This can be very used to do certain types of animation, maybe bouncing type of animations, or just tweaking or refining your curve to make it move in a very particular way. The last function that you have here in the curves is the color. And this simply means that if you have got a lot of curves and you want to define the curves based on their color, it's really simple. You can go ahead and choose the color that you would like to be working with. So say for example, we want to focus on a blue curve. When I adjust this, this will then change those keyframes into a particular color with the entire curve.